You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Once Upon a Time in Wonderland After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Once Upon a Time in Wonderland After Show. Hello, Hi. everyone. <laughs> Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another Once Upon a Time in Wonderland after show. I am your host, Jackie Borowski, and with me is Marissa Serafini. Hello, everyone. And in the booth is Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. what's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? Um, I don't know about you, but this was my favorite episode so far. This is episode three, Forget Me Not. I feel like this episode's really picking up because now we... We have the characters established. We know their motives and their storyline and the, their whole journey that they're going on. And now it's just a matter of encountering fun people along the way because we already know what's going on and their their mission. So I think it was just fun to watch. Not because we already have like answers already uh, shown to us. We know what's happening. So I think it was easier to follow. I think also because we now have enough information to really care about the characters, and we have um, we have a lot of crossovers, not in just the stories of Wonderland, but now we're having crossovers in uh, the Enchanted Kingdom, yeah. so or the Enchanted Forest, whichever way you want to look at it from this episode. And it could be a crossover to Once Upon a Time, too. Yes, that is also true. So we'll start with Will, who is not Will Turner is Will Scarlet from the Robin Hood's Merry Men. Band of Merry Men. Yes. So mm -hmm. he was uh, a member of the Merry Men, it seems, for about a hot second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a really hot second because the story of Will Scarlet, he was with Robin Hood and the Band of Merry Men for a while, since the beginning. And then, uh, and so they showed that a little bit that I guess it seems like from the story, uh, Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, that he had joined the group when everyone else was already there and established. Right. But in the stories, it shows that Will Scarlet was there from the beginning. In so the, a little, you little mean bit the, of the typical mythology yeah. for, yeah. Of, of, uh, yeah. of Robin Hood. Of yeah. Robin Hood, yeah. And in this one, he kind of, we start the scene with him doing, um, I guess, like a initiation rite. He has to steal this, stuff from a person in a wealthy carriage and he succeeds and then he's initiated into the group and um blood oath yeah he makes a blood oath and we um we i'm still curious though because it doesn't explain where he's initially from and i'm still yeah. wondering if he's initially from the enchanted forest or if he's initially from our world because he knows so much about our world or if he just knows that from being there uh he's from sherwood forest isn't he right but or maybe the, that's robin hood robin hood is from sherwood forest yeah but yeah. and but i'm also wondering is sherwood forest part of enchanted forest? the enchanted forest it, it must be or because really? i think that robin hood is is part of the that's his world i firmly believe that robin hood is part of the enchanted forest so, but because Will comes in later, we don't actually know if he's from the Enchanted Forest or is he, he's from somewhere else. So I like that they leave that open for maybe other, he's so, he's got such depth and such dimension, they leave it open for him to be, um, to be having other backstories. Yeah, and he's still very mysterious because we know a little bit about him, but I think in future episodes we'll find out more about his backstory and where he comes from. Because it shows a little bit of his past, what he does, and how it kind of led up to where he is now, but it doesn't show where he's established. Right. And we know he's a thief, and, um, and he has this whole conversation with Robin Hood that becomes very important for the episode, and it also becomes important for maybe him 
reimagining himself or him becoming a better person where he um he has a conversation saying okay we're thieves i want to join a band of thieves and robin hood basically says well no we're not thieves because we're doing this to better humanity we're stealing things but then in the original story of robin hood is yeah. to rob from the rich and give to the poor so they're stealing it for redistribution they're stealing things so that they can better humanity they're not just stealing it for personal gain which um so this is obviously something he struggles with and yeah he doesn't grasp that concept because before he joined the merry men he he always stole for himself and so he's so used to that he has that mindset mentality and it's kind of hard for him to break that habit and i find it interesting that the they have they have characters from aladdin in here when aladdin was um and i'm by no means saying that will is aladdin but i'm just saying that um you have this mentality that someone who had a past where they're they're so poor that they almost have to become a thief like there's there's yeah. something about their lives that they do this to get by or it's more th- survival yeah it's a survival instinct so he's kind of he's kind of filling almost an aladdin role in that sense too because i don't know if we'll get aladdin and we haven't met him yet but he's he's stealing and then um well he hasn't gotten rich off of it though so no not yet <laughs> he doesn't have his own magic genie but so he um but he also has it's he's not in it just for himself he's also in it for this mysterious woman yes anastasia who um well i mean obviously we'll talk about the big reveal as right. to who anastasia <laughs> is but we still don't it's the same thing with will we still don't even though we're given a nugget of information the Anastasia that's revealed to us, we still don't know her backstory. We or don't, which Anastasia it really is. Yes. We don't know if Anastasia is just a name that they gave her or if Anastasia will refer to Romanoff Anastasia or, um, or as, Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> many fans pointed out that uh, Cinderella had a sister, Anastasia. Somebody, what was the last name? Latrain? Or huh? A- Tremaine? An- Tremaine. That's yeah. Tremaine. Um, but the... The, somebody pointed out, and I, if if you could comment or let us know that they're in the Cinderella episode of Once Upon a Time, they showed um, Cinderella's sisters, stepsisters. Now I don't remember that. It, that episode was so long ago, and I don't. Yeah, that was like beginning of season one. I want to say that at the very beginning of the episode, we kind of see, the, we might see the sisters going off to the ball. And that was it. And Cinderella just left by herself. So, had we did see them, if they were really were in that episode, we probably only saw one second of them and didn't even think about it. Right. And so I'm wondering if, like, obviously that's not going to be the same actress no. because you know they cast this fresh, but it, and they have like they recast Robin Hood. So I'm I'm wondering if they're going to have that be a reference to that or they're not i mean i i still i think it would be interesting yeah and i'm glad that they didn't recast robin hood for once upon a time Uh, it would be too confusing there'd be like three different robin hoods and no one no one could follow that and i love the tie-in i love the tie-in for somebody for we watch both shows so it's it's really fun to see uh to see robin hood's I mean, we already know kind of some of his backstory, mm-hmm. but to see more of him with the Merry Men because you don't get that on um, Once Upon a Time. And I liked how they perfectly timed that up. You know, I'm, I'm sure that was production and their end of making sure everything makes sense. Right. But, and but like I like their depiction of Robin Hood because from what I've seen, and I'm referring back to the Disney right. Robin Hood that uh, he's not a fox. We no, yes, that. he's thank, a live person. Thank the Lord, he's not a <laughs> fox, but that he's kind of sly and whatnot and you, you question his motives and he's a little shady but this version of the once version of robin he seems like a really nice genuine yeah, guy he seems like a really good guy um so they so will convinces robin hood that they should go to maleficent's castle and steal this is another tie-in right this is another tie-in we don't actually see uh maleficent but we mm-hmm. hear her voice later. I'll take it. Um, so they he convinces them to go to Maleficent's castle and steal some gold. 
and um Robin Hood is basically like, why should we do that? And he's like, oh, think of all the people you could give the gold to and you can help so many people. And Which I thought was interesting why Robin Hood would be so willing to let a rookie, he, the new member, the newest member of your merry band, and go off of his. It's like, you just started. Why should Robin Hood trust Will right off the bat? I think with something this, as so big as stealing gold. I think this character, though, is a little too trusting, this Robin Hood character, because if you remember from once, he just gives his kid to Neil so that Peter Pan can take him, and so it's like... Well, he, was, he even questioned that. And yeah, he, he didn't he would, want to do that. He still did it. He was still like, yeah. oh, one try, okay. Yeah. I'll sacrifice my child just once. <laughs> So I think he like I think if there's an altruistic purpose going beyond that, he his he has a soft smushy heart. So he's like, okay, you've you've got me with that altruism right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just I was like, yeah, I wouldn't trust him yet. No. I know. I any any normal maybe, rational maybe like person, two three missions in right. or whatever, and then be like, okay, I'll let you give you a chance. But right off the bat, he just got initiated, and right. then <laughs> like seconds later. <laughs> seconds later that uh he has this grand old plan that's very risky and uh no magic or well magic could be involved and it always comes with a price right and so he's very he's even afraid about magic so magic is different in this line in wonderland yeah. or in enchanted forest well yeah i guess enchanted forest yeah but m magic is scary for robin hood yeah i be because i think he's not him and his merry men are just normal people i mean i think they're that area even though it has a lot of like magical people and magical beings it also has a lot of like normal townspeople mm -hmm. and so i think they're probably just normal townspeople who it's like okay all the all the the rich people and the royals they deal with magic but we're just trying to live our everyday lives and get by all right okay um so he goes to the castle, and the merry men are searching for the gold, and he's searching for something else, which we find is a magic mirror, or a looking glass. Looking glass. I was really sad it wasn't the beast mirror that maybe I know, stole. it made me think of the beast mirror. <laughs> Show me the beast! I know, but I gotta say, the castle, it kind of looked like Notre Dame. Like in, oh, really? Yeah, I just thought of Notre Dame uh, castle, the cathedral. And I'm like, oh, what if it was that? Because we, we see before the, I mean, we'll get to it, God, Grendel and all that. And I'm, mm -hmm. So I don't know, I had to tie in with Notre Dame. But I was like, hmm. I don't think we've really seen the inside of Maleficent's castle. I don't think we have up until this point. No. Which I, I kind of want to see more. It seems like she just has random artifacts everywhere. It's a huge place, yeah. too. It seems like the lost and found for the Enchanted Forest. Where was security? <laughs> I was like, we know Maleficent was gone for a few I days, think... but where was the security? They were just walking in the open, with no, like not looking behind them. I have a feeling, A, no one really wants to work for Maleficent, <laughs> and B, she is her own security because she can turn into a big dragon, and she clearly knew that, that something had been missing. And I bet, like, for her, when you look down those halls and you saw all the artifacts, for her, like, a bit, a bit of gold is probably chump change. Yeah, money's nothing. Yeah, to which, her. which she basically says, like, she's like, okay, you can have the gold, whatever. And he took the mirror, and <laughs> she probably has, like, 20 magic mirrors stored somewhere, so she just doesn't care. But she was, like, basically saying, if, um, if you don't return this, you take it, and you know this magic comes with a price. So yeah. there was a warning, and um, she after the merry men had promised not to take anything else but gold, mm -hmm. and Will even said that like, nope, just gold. And then he obviously he lied about it. And right, it was for himself. So he's no longer part of the merry men, and um, he goes home to d to bring his uh, prize to his girlfriend Anastasia, who is the Red Queen. Yep. Um, it's now nice, it's <laughs> nice to know the Red Queen's human equivalent. Yes, it's nice to have that kind of tie-in. But I wish any other actress in the world was playing the Red Queen oh, I know. because I find like 
the character in theory is a really fascinating character. The problem is this woman has Botoxed her face up so much, she's jacked her lips up so much that I can't take her seriously and she's having a hard time making things that are facial expressions. And facial expressions are vital to acting. They're very important. If very you're an actor, important. you need to make facial expressions. And if we can't read <laughs> your facial expressions, we don't know what emotions you're sending out. Like, we don't know if you're happy or you're sad or you're angry. She's supposed to be angry, but we can't tell. I know. And I just like when he comes up to bring her the mirror and she gets all excited about him. She has to almost overact to be able to have an expression on her face. So you could tell she was trying really hard to like laugh and smile. And the only thing that moved really was her mouth. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, she's painfully trying to make a happy facial expression so that people read that she is happy. happy. I wonder if she's regretting it. I know. <laughs> she. I bet, you know, years later, people look back at that and... Things like that happened to Nicole Kidman where she froze her face up so much and now she's not doing it anymore. Mm. It's one of those things. It's sad. Yeah. And so um, she already knows about Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. So I want to know why she already knows about that. Yeah, I thought that was interesting yeah. too. I was like, how in the world would you know this magical mirror that you just threw on the ground and opened a portal? How do you know that that's going to go to Wonderland? Yeah, she Out knows. of all the other realms that you could possibly go to. She knows. And she seemed to know a little bit about it, too. And so I feel bad because I really, really, really love the character of Will. I think he's, like, the actor's adorable. It's such a rich and fan, like, like rich and amazing character. He's layered. He's fun. Yeah. He's such a great character. And then, first off, he is dating uh, Can't Move My Face actress which is just irritating <laughs> to me in general. And then, in real and, life? No. No, no. no in, just in the, sh in the show, show. Like, he, his big love turns out to be can't move my face actress. And then it seems like she's just using him anyway so that she can get the magic mirror to go to the next world. And I'm like, could he just have a big epic love that is someone who loves him back? I mean, he seems, <laughs> and I'm still holding to the, he kind of holds a flame for Alice too. And I think he he loves, like, big, powerful, strong women, but I just want one of them to love him back. Oh, yeah, well, because we saw the, the moment uh, when Red Queen was, and was with Jafar and questioning uh, Cyrus, and then Cyrus found out that, like, oh, uh, no, sorry, the, the Red Queen found out that it was the knave that was with Alice. There was a moment, and I'm like, oh, what? The... The Red Queen knows the name in some for shape and form, and then they had the reveal. I'm like, oh my god, they were they're together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you knew some they had some history, right? And that's going to become interesting later on to see, especially in the next episode where you have Jafar questioning about the knave. It's going to become interesting to see what her reaction is to this whole thing. Because, uh, you know, in the clip, I don't mean to move to the clip before, but it's like the clip for the next episode. He's saying, he's, he says to somebody that, oh, you're not, something to the effect of, oh, you're not cold and heartless, or oh, you, like, you have emotions, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's interesting to see if she still has some sort of feelings for him, even though I think her ultimate um, concern is world domination or wonderland domination <laughs> wonderland so we have um, jafar and the red queen in jafar's cavern in his basement in his and dungeon his lair his dungeon lair <laughs> yes um i like it and they're basically taunting cyrus to come eat with them they have some sort of magic book that <laughs> helps them find beasts but I, I'm just like... That would be best to torture Alice. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, okay, does this magic book, which seems to be made up of, like, circles and dots and stuff, <laughs> do the circles and dots match up to things that tell you where the beasts are? You should have known the beast was there anyway because the beast is just in Jafar's basement. Um, yeah, and I, there I were a bunch of symbols, and I'm like, it kind of looks like a pentagram, but right. not. And then, uh, I don't know if you caught the reference to Sarlacc Pit, Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> that was I totally like did a it. clear reference oh to God. Star Wars. I love that. That would digest people over millennia. That'd be the, oh, yeah. the worst torture. I was like, uh, thank oh, you. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Once Upon a Time writers. <sighs> I totally didn't. I totally didn't think of that. 
but that is amazing. And so I like that she references this book, and but now I'm like, why did you give us no information on this book? What is in this book? What is it about? I want to know what's in like uh, the contents because we only saw like one or two pages, but I right. want to see more. Right. We saw like the square circle dot pages. <laughs> I want to know where the but bander balder-snatch, bandersnatch 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 pages so they try to invite him to dinner and he's just like no i'm not gonna eat dinner with you and they the jafar basically taunts him saying i've said basically like 20 million times <laughs> jafar <laughs> taunts it i know i'm like what is this jafar taunts him saying that uh, Alice is going to use the wishes. Cyrus firmly believes that she's not going to use those wishes. And so they decide that they're going to find a way to kind of provoke her to use the wishes. And the queen says, okay, well, it'll provoke her to use the wishes if you put Cyrus, or if you put Cyrus in danger, which I don't understand how sending a bandersnatch after her puts Cyrus in danger. Her logic was not lining up on logical revenues. I think it would get Cyrus to speak. Maybe it would. And so Cyrus, though... Like to, to get one person to open up, you gotta go after his loved one. Yeah, that's true. So the Bandersnatch is from Through the Looking Glass. Uh, and it's described as quick, and it has really strong jaws. And it's also described in a poem that Lewis Carroll wrote called The Hunting of the Snark. He invented the word snark. Funny... Uh, <laughs> funny fact. Snark. Fun fact. So they send the Bandersnatch after her. Meanwhile, we cut to Alice and Will in modern presenty times who decide to find a way to look into the past so that they can see who stole the bottle. And Will says the way we look into the past who see, to see who stole the bottle is to get the forget-me-not. Another clever little play on words. <laughs> yep. Because it's forget-me-not. Not. It's, it's a knot. But it's, all, it's a rope with knots on it. But it's also don't forget me. As in forget-me-not. Not. I that thought was, that was cute. That, yeah, that was. Yeah. Very it's just like the fairy. <laughs> I hope there's a lot of other play on words. I know Steve would appreciate them. <laughs> yes, exactly. So they, he says that the caterpillar has this. So they have to go to the caterpillar who has a bounty on his head. And so they go right. to the underland of Underworld, which is basically full of steampunk bad guys. Um, yeah, it's like the nitty gritty world, that you, the underground that you don't want to go to. All the shady people. <laughs> all the shady steampunk people. Yep. I really liked that. I was like, everybody in here is from steampunk land. That's okay. You can have <laughs> steampunk bad guy zone. I'm okay with that. So he goes to the caterpillar and asks him where the knot is. The caterpillar basically says, basically, ugh. the caterpillar <laughs> says, I know, what is this? What is this? The caterpillar says that he doesn't have the knot anymore, that the knot is with the, the Grendel. Grendel. The Grendel is from Beowulf. Yes, the Anglo-Saxon story, Beowulf. Yes, and it's a monster to be feared by all. Yeah, that was because the description I read. in the story of Beowulf, everyone fears the monster except for Beowulf. Beowulf, Beowulf yeah. is the only one that could kill him. So Grendel is the Beowulf monster. I like that. I like that. It's also it's a you another tie-in. It's not really grim fairy tale or, or folklore, but it's an Anglo-Saxon story. Right. I I like the I appreciate the tie-ins of stories from other cultures. I yeah. enjoy that, and I hope to see more of it, especially in this you know, European story too. Right. So. And so uh, I gotta say, the Grendel, at first glance, he rem reminded me of Quasimodo from Notre Dame. He does. Uh, Notre Dame. He does. And then that's where my mind went to with Maleficent's castle. I was like, that looks like the inside of Notre Dame. So. Yeah, just had to point Maybe that out. Maybe he has a further backstory. And in his backstory, um, he looks like Gaston, which <laughs> I was just looking. A little bit. He, mm -hmm. I was like, he's totally looking like Gaston, but I know because they've already had Gaston on the show. like In once. In <laughs> once, that, that's not Gaston. So I'm like, why did you put him in a Gaston outfit? <laughs> it's so confusing. And he looks like him with the hair and the muscles. And, and the clothes that and he like, was wearing. Yeah, totally. 
Anyway, <laughs> Grendel Gaston, fake Gaston. So the caterpillar, back to the caterpillar. The caterpillar threatens Will and he says, if you, uh, you either, you either get this and then I have to like, don't bring it back to me and then I'll kill you. Or you bring it back to me and then I have this powerful tool. And he opens this plate and this guy's head is screaming on it. So he's basically yeah, like, he's like, this or this, fate. this will yeah. be you if you don't comply. Yeah. Um, and the knave says, I'm doing this for, um, so he cares about Alice. He's doing this. Well, I think I wrote this down wrong. Just kidding. So <laughs> let me just skip ahead to the. Um, uh, oh, the important conversation about the lack of having options. So him and Alice talk about. Uh, Alice is basically being like, okay, you're going to give this really powerful tool just back to this caterpillar. And <clears throat> he's he says. Um, oh, my God, my brain just. That, died. Well, he said that pretty much that he was would you justifying rather, it. Yeah, would you rather keep it for our purposes or give it to someone powerful who would use it for a wrongdoing? And and he points out to her, what would you do if this was about Cyrus? If if somebody had to die to get you Cyrus, what would you do? And she's pulling up other scenarios, yeah. and he's like, but what if that was it? Um, but, so he's teaching her a very real like lesson in hard knock life stuff yeah and but hard they, knock life stuff <laughs> deep thoughts brought to you by jackie and but they he ends up burning it i'm like what okay i was like this really important I but mean, it's like harry potter and the elder wand i know but gr granted you, you used it for your own purposes and that that was all you needed it really for but i'm like oh just give it to someone he had to destroy Other it than like the you destroy the elder wand you break it and you get rid of it because it's too powerful yeah if you don't watch harry potter which you should you should read, i mean who hasn't it. watched but um yeah if you watch this show you probably know about harry potter but probably. he had to destroy the elder wand because it was too powerful True. this is a too powerful item and i appreciate that this shows a really strong character true hero destroys the really powerful magical item that can be used for bad things too so they go to the Grendel's house. The, Will starts talking to the Grendel about trying to be like, oh, the past is so sad. You don't want to look at it. And Alice is like, oh, how do you know all these things? Tell me more <laughs> about Anastasia. And he won't have any of it. And then they manage to escape because Alice uses a wish to cut the cords. And they go out the door and the but Bandersnatch, Balderdash, bandersnatch a dash. <laughs> Bandersnatch, um, the Bandersnatch is outside, and they close the door, and uh, the Bandersnatch eventually gets in, and they have this huge fight, and she uses the rope to almost hang him, and then Will stabs him, and it's a huge fight scene. That all went down pretty fast. Yeah, that was a really good fight scene. I I was um, I was very impressed by Alice's continued strength and skill of holding that creature. Uh, yeah, I was like, okay, let her hold the. It look pretty much strangle it, and you just kind of stand there. <laughs> I know. Everyone is like, <laughs> uh, durr. And she's like, help, a little help, please. Right. But she knew how to defeat the Bandersnatch because smart. Cyrus had told her, and this, this goes with another theme of Once uh, Upon a Time in Wonderland, which is know your enemies. Know their strengths, know their weaknesses. And he, they thought that uh, Jafar and the Queen thought that they were kind of getting Alice because of the face Cyrus made when they picked the Bandersnatch. But the face, he made that face on purpose mm -hmm. because he knew that she knew the weakness of the Bandersnatch, which yeah. was perfect, which is, it's has, it's stupid and has bad eyesight. Um, <laughs> and that could also go the reason why Alice was the one who wanted to kill it because she didn't even let Will know how to kill it. Yeah, I think she... she wanted to be that woman he is like, yeah, whatever, I just I do it. think she keeps <laughs> Will on a, like, as needed basis because she didn't even let, let will know that she was on she just watched him like massively struggling and she <laughs> yeah. had just already cut her cords with the wish and she was like bing done so yeah, I that think, was awesome and then he thought it was the wish i'm like oh and no. i thought it was like yeah why, i know was i was like stupid. that was stupid <laughs> why would you do that why would you do that and like, she didn't that's the it's a very, very small wish, and I just questioned the sh real sharpness of the edge of the wish that, that would cut a big rope like that. Apparently, the wish is a razor diamond sharp. I guess. Apparently. They're that magical. I, I don't know. 
I didn't find that believable, but it is Once Upon a Time in right. Wonderland. So. It's a magical wish magical. diamond situation. Just let it Ruby happen. Thing thing. It happened. So they defeat the Bandersnatch, and then after uh, they find out from the rope that it was the White Rabbit who stole the bottle, thus making Alice feel very upset because she feels betrayed. They gave it to the Red Queen. And they gave it, and gave it to the Red Queen. And the Red Queen and Jafar come back, and they question the Grendel. And uh, then Jaf- and Jafar murders the Grendel. Oh, yeah. Jafar! After after they were just having a nice conversation and a deal that seemed like it was actually going to happen, that Grendel would uh, have the so love of his life bad back. I'm like, ah. I felt so bad for him. Because they tell, they tell him that... Um, he basically says it's impossible. You can't get my wife back. It's impossible. And they say if we succeed, the impossible will become possible. So whatever plan they have, whatever plan they have to get this magic, whatever plan they have to harness the genie's magic is is huge. It'll make all the rules of magic overturned. And it was also upsetting because even before Jafar and the Red Queen came, that the Grendel... He, at first, he was all angry and whatnot, and then he had that moment of realization he doesn't need the mirror, or the not anymore, and then he had uh, a character growth, and then to be killed in the end... Yeah, he had it, a very there, stunted character That growth. wasn't the greatest resolution to that character. I know, and I, I almost wanted to know more of what he was like beforehand as fake Gaston, because apparently she, uh, the Red Queen, was the one who cursed him. Because mm-hmm. he stole the forget me not, and I wanted to know what happened with him and his wife that he had to steal the forget me not. Guess we're not gonna know. Mm-hmm. Well, unless they do some sort of random flashback, maybe. So, uh, the <laughs> now I'm like, where am I? Um, so yes, he destroyed the forget me not, so now nobody can use it, and we know in the next episode, Jafar is going to be questioning people as to who the knave is and it'll be interesting to see the red queen's reactions and i don't really have anything else that's pretty much yeah that's to me. pretty much the episode but we covered it the queen is anastasia we don't know which anastasia though i know and i hope it is a, some sort of tie-in because i do think that they like to tie in a lot of other stories so yeah we know will has multiple I, i'm kind of thinking cinderella anastasia i'm thinking but that too yeah, I'm, also I'm because just they thinking... showed Cinderella in the first episode. Yeah, Ex- exactly. And yeah. I, I don't know. I just keep thinking back to the Disney movie, and I know this is a story. It's been around longer before Disney, but I just think Anastasia's a redhead, not a blonde. Oh, yeah. Well, but you know, well, it's the casting, Sleeping Beauty is can... a redhead in this version too, <laughs> who looks nothing like Sleeping Beauty. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I just can't. I can't. I, I can't with this wicked queen. Her face doesn't move. Anyway, <laughs> that was my we, last. We final, don't feel for her. Final deep thought. Your face doesn't move. I can't have emotions for now, you. The thing is, we can't emotionally connect to her. It's That's hard the problem. to. It's hard to. Especially she can't emote, and we can't either. When okay, if you're comparing this to uh, Lena Perilla's character in um, Once, Lena Perilla. Lena Perilla. I'm sorry. Who's the um, Regina. Way, who's Regina. If you compare her to that character, she was actually nice in the past. She mm-hmm. was very nice. And so you have this very traumatic event that happens to her, a series of traumatic events, really. And you see, okay, she's becoming mean because her life just sucks. This woman already seemed to have some sort of undermining purpose before he stole the, the looking glass. So now yeah. I'm like, hmm, what... Like, what is her backstory? Was she ever nice? Did she ever, did she ever have feelings for him? And I guess we're going to find that out. I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, is this relationship genuine? Is she in it for a bigger purpose? Right. And I think we have to go farther back into her backstory to realize her motives. Yes. Yes. So, news and gossip. I'm really bad with pronouncing names. So the guy who plays Cyrus, Peter G- Gadget. Gadget? Is Gadget. that how you say it? Um, I read an interview with him, and he says they're holding back. They have a backstory of Cyrus and Alice, but they're holding back on Cyrus's backstory till 
later in the season, apparently Cyrus is going to have a very intricate backstory. Hmm. Um, and they're going to explore the genie mythology more. And this this next... Uh, Spo- it's a spoiler. It's a spoiler. spoiler. So uh, turn off your thing now if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg is going to be playing the rabbit's wife in an upcoming ac- yeah, episode, episode eight. eight. I love Whoopi, so I think that'll be I awesome. I mean, she's awesome. And then I think Who we'll doesn't? see by then what the Red Queen has on the White Rabbit because he's she's got to have something on him. Yeah, because the White Rabbit is at her beck and call. Yeah, he mm-hmm. seems ready to poo his pants every time he's around <laughs> her, so it's just, it's got to be something. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that'll be fun. So, predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. So, in the next episode, they're going to be trying to put Will to death, we saw from the preview. Mm-hmm. And I bet, my guess is that the Red Queen will try to prevent that in a subtle sort of way or in some sort of way that is not giving all her hand to Jafar. Because she seems to like to hold her... She, her and Jafar both are doing this counterbalance where they're trying to hold their cards really close to their chest. So they are working together, but they're not giving all revealing their... Revealing all their secrets. Revealing all their secrets. So okay. my guess is she tries to tell... Like, she tries to get this to stop. And Jafar might figure out what... Why she's doing that. Mm-hmm. As he questions around about Will. Well, we saw Grendel... Which we know is a Beowulf story. I want to see other... It's not really a prediction, but I maybe we'll see other monsters from Beowulf story that come after Will and Alice. I think that'd, that'd be, be cool. Fun. Yeah. I would like to see... I would just like to see monsters from all kinds of different stories. Absolutely. Because in Beowulf, Grendel was just one of three monsters that Beowulf went up against. So maybe we'll see the other two. There you go. There you go. Thank you, everyone. Where can they find you, Marissa? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. You can find me on Twitter at 123Jackie underscore B. That's Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-E underscore B. And then on Instagram, all one word, at 123Jackie B. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram um, at AfterBuzz TV and go to iTunes and YouTube. Rate and comment our show. Yes, we love the comments. Comments are I, awesome. I love your comments, you guys. You have such interesting comments, and it's it's good for the conversation. Yes, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thanks. Michael B. We, we did get yes. Will Scarlet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, keep doing them, and we'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Views expressed herein are those of the host only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.